at our um, study in the life of Jesus. And today we're going to take a look at Jesus' miracles and Jesus' ministry. And so uh, if you have your Bible with you, why don't you open it up to Mark chapter 2. We're going to take a look at verses 1 through 12. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, when we talk about Jesus' miracles, you know, Jesus performed um, many different miracles. As a matter of fact, as far as the miracles that Jesus um, perform as far as what is recorded in the Bible. I mean, what I mean by recording the Bible, as far as the actual stories that you can go and you can read about in detail, there's, uh, I think, four, uh, 34 different stories of Jesus' miracles that are recorded in the Gospels, um, which if you think about it, those in and of themselves, that would be pretty significant. Uh, but in addition to that, you have others that just simply say that Jesus performed all kinds of different things, and in John, it talked about how uh, Jesus did many things that weren't recorded in his book, and if uh, they, they were recorded, that the world's books wouldn't be uh, able to hold them. And so Jesus performed many different miracles, but there's, there's many more that Jesus performed that we really don't read about in the Gospels as far as the stories go. But here's a question. Why did he do these things? Why did Jesus go about and perform miracles? You know, many times I think that uh, people will look at Jesus and, and uh, his performing miracles and they'll say, oh, it's because Jesus was compassionate. Jesus was kind. Jesus wanted to provide for people, which undoubtedly is the case. As a matter of fact, we read that Jesus was moved for, with compassion about things. But there was more to it than that, and there was more to it back then and there's more to it today. I mean, we look at the miracles of Jesus today, and they're more than just simply stories that we go, oh, wow, how could anybody do something like that? There was a point and a purpose for the miracles back then, and that point and purpose for the miracles back then is the same point and purpose for us today. And so when we look at Jesus' miracles, and today we're going to take a look at just one in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, um, we need to understand that the point is more than just simply being compassionate, more than Jesus being loving, more than Jesus wanting to provide for somebody. Instead, um, the point to all of Jesus' miracles was just simply to show that he was the Messiah. And that's the same thing that we should take away from it today as well. Okay? All right, so if uh, you have your Bible open to Mark chapter 2, Let's take a look at um, one of the many miracles that Jesus performed in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In Mark chapter 2 and verse number 1, it says, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered there, uh, so many gathered there that there was no room left, not even uh, outside the door. So he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since he could not get them uh, get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and, after digging through it, lowered the mat, uh, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take up your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. Then he got up, took up his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Now, a couple of points about miracles before we start to go on and uh, take a look more in depth about this story. As a matter of fact, we're going to go, we're going to take a look a little bit about this story. 
And then we're going to see a little bit more about what the point and the purpose to that miracle was and, you know, the point and purpose to, to all miracles as well. But before we do that, you know, we kind of need to understand a little bit about miracles because I think that so many times we get very off kilter um, in our day and age about what a miracle really is. And so the first thing that we need to see is just simply what is a miracle? You know, uh, I, I think that so oftentimes we really misuse this word in our society. And so, and uh, you know, I know that when I say this, somebody's going to come up and they're going to, you know, they're going to say, oh, wait, wait a minute, you, you, because a lot of times, you know, we see that God is doing something. And we see that God is doing something incredible. And we see that God is doing something amazing. And we see that maybe this is even beyond our, our realm of comprehension and understanding. And we say, oh, it's a miracle. But, you know, it, it really isn't. It's just simply incredible, amazing that God is doing. And for us to say it's a miracle, it, it, it's not that we're trying to discount what God is doing today. But if we say that enough, we kind of misunderstand what these things are that are recorded in Scripture. You know, God doing something, whether it's by miraculous means or non-miraculous means, it's still God doing something, right? And it's still something that's amazing and incredible. And so when I first of all come up and, and you know, uh, if you come up to me and say, oh, isn't that a miracle? Um, if I'm in an ornery mood, I might say, no, it's not. <laughs> But, you know, I, I know that if I do that, you'll probably get mad at me. So I probably won't say that. But in the back of my mind, I'll probably be thinking, no, it's not. And in the back of your mind, now that I've said that, you're probably going to come up to me. When you say that to me, you're going to be thinking, hey, he's probably thinking that, but it's okay. But anyway, what is a miracle point, you know, as far as what we see in the Scriptures? What we see in the Scriptures is that a miracle is going to be either a suspension or an intervention of God's natural laws. You know, when God created the universe, he set his natural laws into motion. And um, what we have today and the things that go on today are all according to God's natural laws. Now, are they amazing? Yeah, actually they are. Do we understand them all? No, we don't understand them all. But as far as a normal process and a normal pattern, if God and God is a God of order, then you can see that his creation is going to be a creation of order. And so the natural laws of the universe are the things that are designed to keep everything going and flowing and on track. All right. Now, a miracle is going to be when God directly intervenes in that structure, and he's going to intervene with it in the, in the fact that he is going to do something that is out of the ordinary, or he's going to suspend a natural process of something in order for something to take place. And that's really what a miracle is, okay? And so, like I say, a lot of times when, you know, somebody's involved in a car accident and they survive, and we say, man, I don't understand how they could survive a crash like that. That was a miracle. Well, you know, God's involved, okay? You know, God's there, God, but unless there is that direct intervention or suspension of God's natural laws, then it's not a miracle, you know? You know, if somebody drives their truck and they go off a cliff and they crash down at the bottom and survive, that's not a miracle. If they drive their truck off a cliff and it stops and it levitates back to the road, then that would be, okay? Do you see the, the difference here, okay, of what a miracle really is? And why I say that is I'm not trying to discount um, bringing God glory here and now, but I am trying to say, hey, we need to understand what a miracle is in order to really understand the miracles that Jesus performed. Okay? Now, something else, and that is, why did Jesus perform these miracles? You know? A lot of times we say, oh, well, Jesus performed these miracles because he was uh, compassionate to the masses. Jesus performed these miracles because he was trying to help people out. Jesus performed, and, and you know, that's not a wrong answer because Jesus was moved with compassion. The story that we read just now about this man, you know, this Jesus undoubtedly was moved with compassion about this man. But one thing that we need to understand is that that is not the main purpose and that's not the main point. As a matter of fact, oftentimes in the Bible we read about, um, uh, in fact, many times traditionally, we have miracle signs and wonders, these three different words that are used. And if you look at a, a word analysis of all these three different words, they're all pointing to something. 
they're all meaning something as far as the sign goes. You know, why do we have a, the, the word sign to use for miracle? It's because that one event, that miraculous event, was supposed to point to something. It was supposed to point to a sign. You know, we have this idea about wonders. Why do we use the word wonders for miracles? It's because it's the effect, the intended effect of what the miracle was supposed to do. You see, the miracles themselves were supposed to point towards Jesus being the Messiah. Jesus didn't come up and uh, go around town saying, Hey, I'm the Messiah. Hey, I'm the Messiah. Listen to me. Why didn't he do that? Well, because if he would have done that, people would have discounted what his, his uh, testimony was. Instead, what God's plan was, it was to have other testimonies of Jesus testifying that he was the Christ. Now, John the Baptist was one of those testimonies. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus, preaching that the Messiah was coming, and when he received the sign from above of who Jesus was, then he would say, that's the Messiah. I'm testifying that that's the Messiah. But there's other testimonies as well. There's the testimony of Scripture itself, and Jesus going and fulfilling prophecy in Scripture. And some of those prophecies of Scripture was that Jesus was going to come and he was going to work miracles. The miracles that Jesus did was supposed to be evidence that he was supposed to be from above and from the Father so that people would notice that and say, hmm, what else is there about this man? And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Now, you remember in John chapter 3, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, and Nicodemus, who was part of the Sanhedrin council, he was a bigwig in, in Israel, he said, no one can do these things unless the Father is with him. Okay? So Nicodemus and even other people understood and realized, hey, wait a minute, this man is from the Father because of what he's doing. Let's see what there else is there, uh, there is about him.